Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Happy New Year. It is so good to see you. Oh my goodness. Same How's here. Happy been? New Year. You've been I, I've been well. You know, I, I brought the New Year in no phone, no devices, and I've just been staying so present. And I will tell you that it has worked wonders yeah. for me just being present. How about yourself? Uh, you know, one day at a time. <laughs> yeah. Um, right now, I'm actually in Savannah, Georgia, um, to, to urge everyone to, to vote. Yes. And, and to vote for Reverend Warnock, Raphael Warnock, who was a son of Savannah, and John Ossoff. So I yes. just got here today to, to, to remind folks that their voices matter. Yes. Listen, this is a historic moment. I am talking to the vice president-elect Kamala Harris. You have been a senator for a very long time as well. So the fact that you're endorsing, you know, Reverend Warnock and, and Asif says a lot about you. Let's, let's, let's get into what we both care so much about, which is the January 5th Senate runoff election in Georgia. Yes. Um, is that a train behind you? I love it. If there is a train. <laughs> it's listen, boring. Listen, you are a hardworking woman. And so I just want to get right into uh, my first question for you. Um, let's set the scene. What is the makeup of the Senate? What is the, the importance of having a Senate? Yeah, so, I mean, here's the thing. It is, um, so there are 100 members of the United States Senate. And um, right now, the Republicans have the majority. And so that means that whoever's in the majority gets to basically make the rules right. around what we're going to vote on versus what we're not going to vote on, right? So it, it has everything to do with what legislation will get passed and, and whose voices will be heard. I am only, Janelle, I am only the second black woman in the history of the United States Senate to be elected. Mm. And right now, um, and, and, and when I am sworn in on January 20th, which I will be, whether Donald Trump likes that or not, um, I will, yes. there, there, but there will, the sad, the bitter, sweet mo moment about that is that there will be no more black women in the United States Senate, mm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I used to joke with Cory Booker, who's the senator from New Jersey, that when I got there, we had a Senate, we had a black Senate um, caucus because there were two of us, <laughs> mm. right? Yeah. Of a hundred. So there is that piece of it. There is a piece of it about Democrats versus Republicans in the majority, but there is this other piece of it as it relates to the Georgia races, which is United States senators have so much power mm. to determine how our country will move forward or not. And I'll remind folks of an example that I think is such a, a great example which is I was on the Senate floor at about two o'clock in the morning a couple years ago when we were debating the future of the Affordable Care Act known as Obamacare. Mm. Mm. Now, President Obama, together with, with Vice President Biden at the time, passed legislation and, and, and were leaders to say access to health care should be a right and not a privilege just those who can afford it. Yeah. But because Barack Obama, it was his signature piece of legislation, the Republicans were trying to get rid of it. Yeah. And that one particular early morning, one United States Senator walked on the Senate floor and determined the future of health care. Mm. And that was the late, great John McCain, who with a thumbs down said, no, you don't play politics with people's health care. The right. power of one Senator Georgia has the power to elect two. Yeah. Who can go there and say that let's have the majority. Let's put on the floor things like the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which I was an author of together with Cory Booker and the Congressional Black Caucus. We have the power to say, let's put on the floor legislation that's about addressing climate change and taking it seriously, including g g climate injustice yeah. and racial injustice as it relates to that issue. We'll have the, the, the power to say, let's have a federal minimum wage that is at least $15 an hour instead of $7.25 an hour. That's the right. The power to say, let's deal with the inequities in our education system, in our healthcare system, in our economy. 
all of this is at stake. Not yeah. to mention that Georgia has such a long history of trying to take away and deny people the right to vote. Let's not forget one of the great heroes who is now a great ancestor, Don Lewis, a son of Georgia, yeah. who shed his blood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge for our right to vote. And we now have an opportunity in his home state to elect John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock in his memory, dedicated to what he wanted us to do, which is to vote. Yeah, yes. That is so well said. Um, I think if you are in Georgia right now, please figure out where you are and where you can vote. Uh, January 5th is Tuesday. This is the Senate runoff election. We need the Biden Harris administration agenda to be supported by Democrats. We know that if Mitch McConnell and the Republicans run the Senate, they will put us in gridlock and they will put us in paralysis and block everything that the Biden Harris administration is trying to do. We cannot allow that. So we have to elect Asa and Warnock. January 5th, I'm with you, Kamala. Um, I don't know what our time. I don't know what our time is like, but I had like maybe a uh, another question for you. Good, you and then I have one for you. Okay. 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 Cool. <laughs> uh, I would say, can you talk to us? Talk to us. Remind us about what you and Joe Biden. Uh, you know what you guys are passionate about. What you're going to be hitting the ground running doing this uh, the, as soon as you get into office. Talk about your agenda. Well, it's about dealing with the four crises that have converged on us. Um, it, and so first and foremost, it's COVID. And, you know, we're now looking at over 350,000 Americans that have died from it, right? And the, the, the tens of millions of people have contracted it. So we need to, we need to deal with that. And it's about a, a, a plan for a distribution of the vaccines, which really this current administration has not had, taking into account racial disparities and racial equity in the way that we distribute the vaccine. I got right. the vaccine. I encourage everybody to take yes. it. Get it. I will be taking right. it too. Right. I, my Thanks. friend's father worked on uh, the Moderna vaccine. So I've That's had an opportunity guy. and she has it as well. She has the vaccine. I've talked, I trust scientists. That's I believe right. in science. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. So we want to encourage everyone when it's their time to get vaccinated. Um, we, we need to deal with the other crisis, which is, of course, the economic crisis that has resulted from that. Here in Georgia, one in seven families is describing their family has been hungry. Yeah. One in six are describing their inability to pay rent. One in four small businesses are looking at going out of business. And this is, this is reflective of the national statistics. So the other priority is to get folks back up and running around small businesses, around jobs, um, to get kids back in school. We have a, a commitment. If, if hopefully we have a Congress that will work with us. Yeah. To take 100 days to figure out how to safely reopen schools so our babies, all of our children can get back in school and yes. maximize their God-given talent. Um, so there's that. There's the long overdue reckoning on racial injustice in America yeah. and taking that on and dealing with it head on. And yeah. then, of course, the climate crisis, and, which is, you know, pounding at our door in every way. Yeah. So those are the four main areas of focus. Um, tell me what I, I, you are so, you are so brilliant and creative and you always give of yourself. You and I run into each other where, where you are yeah. always doing social justice work. You are always speaking truths about race and about gender and about equality and equity. So tell me, you know, we're still in the new year in the earliest days of the new year. What, what motivates you and what gives you a sense of hope and optimism about 2021? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I've seen it. I've, I've seen it happen. I've seen what happens when communities come together and coming from a large community. You know, my, I tell the story all the time. My grandmother was a sharecropper mm -hmm. in uh, Aberdeen, Mississippi. So I come from a hard working class family where everybody had to pull together. People were washing dishes, you, you washing clothes, you're, you know, you're taking care of each other. And so community has been at the center. You know, it's not something that everybody is going to have the stomach for or the patience for. Yeah. 
Right. But there are sacrifices at an early age that I've had to make for my community to help better my community, to want to make my community proud. And so I think uh, as music has you know, given me more notoriety and I've traveled around the world, I have a unique ability to bring people together. I have a unique ability to speak for the voices who are pushed to the margins of society. I might not always do it right. I might not always want to do it. But it's something that my grandmother instilled in us that it, it, it baffles me today that um, I can't let go. I, can't, I cannot push aside uh, the rights of marginalized communities. You know, being, 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 being queer, being black, you know, growing up, to, to a, growing up with a mom who was a janitor and my father was a trash man. My mm -hmm. stepdad, you know, still works at the post office. Mm -hmm. He does not want to quit. Right. So <laughs> I have a unique... I, I have a access to certain things and I'm also, I also have my ears to the streets and to the ground of what real people are dealing with. And so, um, so yeah, I think I just try to use music and, and art uh, to continue to tell that story and to bridge those gaps. Cause when you, when you're at a concert, it don't matter who, what, what God you serve, uh, what party you're a part of, you know, you're all uniting around something. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Keep doing <laughs> what you do. Keep doing what Thank you do. You inspire so many people. And, and, and the beauty of your gift is that you do have a very special way of bringing people in, in a welcoming way, in a way that is about sharing the dignity that we should share with each other. Um, but doing it always with, with a, a force that is about truth telling and um and i do believe when i you know when i look at leaders like you i know that our future is bright and it's it's just about everybody like you said working yeah and, and it's not easy there are other things you yeah. can do with your time and i want to thank you for always stepping up to to give of yourself it means well something. listen listen i i'm 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 just a mirror ref reflecting back your hard work it's not easy uh working i'm sure well, I'm gonna going into this 2020 one, excuse me, we're out of 20, but going into 2021, 2022, 23, 24, um, fighting for the things you believe in. And I just want to tell you that I'm personally thankful. I'm so thankful to have you in office. I feel like, I feel like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not that I look at you or people should look at uh, elected officials as saints or like they're going to get everything perfect but to know that you are in office reflecting people like me like my grandmother hard working class folks you're, you're, you're fighting to get this virus under control you represent real leadership and I appreciate that I appreciate that you are sad because you don't have to you don't have to you, you didn't have to accept Joe Biden's invitation you didn't have to say yes, but you did. And I know that you're gonna do that with integrity. I know that you're gonna fight for marginalized voices. I know that when I see you, you are gonna be thinking about this country, that you're gonna have things on your mind because you do care. And from seeing you prior to you being, you know, the, the next vice president elect, that was always in you. That doesn't have to be taught. So I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for fighting for us. Thank you for representing um, um, th those of us who just have felt like there is, there's no way forward. Like where is the, wh what is our future going to look like? And, and you're actually planning to figure that out and make that m better for us. And it, and it, yeah, we are, we all are. Together, and they're all looking at me cause I'm supposed to go on stage right now. Okay. So, Raphael all right. And John. Yes, send Happy them my New love. Year. Happy Let's New vote. Year. Until next time, stay Until well. Until next stay time. Healthy. I'll see you. I love you. I'll be praying for you. you. And I call me whenever you. you need me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Right. God bless.